Most of us think we need a big change in our lives in order to feel happier. Maybe if I just move, I'll be happier. When I meet my dream guy and get married, then I'll be satisfied. But happiness doesn't stem from a big milestone event. Happiness comes from daily habits. There's something about the way of life in France that has a certain elegance, a certain je ne sais quoi that's hard to pin down. I'm an American, and while living in France, I've been taking notes, noticing what different lifestyle habits could look like and how that can shape our lives and help us feel happier. Here are some surprising French habits that I believe make for a happier life. Engage in the art of living. One of the obvious things I notice living in France is how much the French place such a high importance on culture and the arts, like going to museums or art galleries, sculpture exhibits, or seeing independent or foreign films, going to the cinema or the ballet, discussing art at length. These are cultural traditions that have lasted for generations in France, older generations that are ingrained in the French way of life. And it's inspiring because it really allows one to appreciate the beauty in life. There's also the simple lifestyle habits like how many of the French have capsule wardrobes, buying quality pieces of good and long-lasting fabrics, or how they regularly have an apéro in town with friends at the end of the workday. Regular socialization and in-person community is one of the keys to living a happy and fulfilled life. Engage in conversation gracefully. Tend to your intellectual pursuits. Approach learning from a state of pleasure and curiosity. The French argue and discuss gracefully without being triggered by differing opinions. I've had numerous conversations with French people where we openly disagree on politics, and never once did it get heated. The French are so open-minded in discussion and lively debate. Instead of being so sensitive around political issues, there's an interest, a curiosity in contemplating different sides. Since living in France, I've learned how to enter a conversation with the goal of learning something new. Instead of feeling the need for other people to understand or agree with me, I'm open to learning. Being well-read and informed is an important aspect of living a French lifestyle. This next one's a very simple habit, but it is putting your clothes out to dry. In France, one doesn't often have a dryer. Instead of rushing and just throwing clothes in the dryer, the French often have to put their clothes out on a rack. And doing this actually really helps one to live slower and more mindfully. You have to pick up each piece and put it out, and smell the fresh laundry soap, feel the textures, and it allows you a chance to venture outside to the terrace for a moment. This is a mindless task, but it really helps you to be present and connect for a few moments with the task at hand. Practicing mindfulness and meditation while in activity is one of the easiest ways to live slower and live a more peaceful and present life. Develop the habit of being multilingual. Adopting French phrases and words into your everyday life is a beautiful way to romanticize and bring a sense of beauty into your everyday life. Learning French is not easy. French is one of the most difficult languages to learn and it has not been an easy journey for me to be really good at French or language learning for that matter. But my favorite way to learn and improve in French is using Lingoda and working with a teacher. The best way to learn French is through immersion and consistently practicing your French in conversation. Lingoda's website makes it so easy to browse classes, filter by time and day, and then book a place in a class with a single click. 
classes are offered 24 seven and allow students in any time zone to participate. And classes are on Zoom, so you really get that one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, allowing for maximum conversation practice. I love that I can look at the objectives and the class material as well as the vocabulary before I sign up for the class. The classes I take are in groups of three to four people, so having that small class size and that personalized one-on-one -on -one attention is so, so helpful in improving and getting better at my French language skills. And if you really want to improve your French language skills, I highly recommend checking out the Lingoda Sprint which basically allows you to study either every day or every other day for two months and get either 50% cash back or 100% cash back for attending all of your lessons. In other words, it's free classes, free language learning classes, which is just so cool. I was able to get a discount code for you, so if you'd like to start learning on Lingoda, you can click the link down below in the description or use my code HELENA09 for 20 euros or $25 off your deposit. If you've ever wanted to learn French or improve your skills, go for a semester abroad in France or even move or travel to France, I highly recommend using Lingoda. It is truly one of the most enjoyable language learning experiences I've had in the last four years and it's my favorite way to learn and get better. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. This next French habit is one that I definitely believe leads to happiness. And it is not caring so much about overemphasizing your beauty or caring too much about staying young and staying youthful. In France, while there is cosmetic surgery here, it's less obvious. Like it's less obvious in France seeing Botox and filler and French women are really about being natural and simplicity and aging gracefully and naturally. And while I'm definitely not against makeup or cosmetic surgery or any of those things, I just find it very refreshing how accepting a lot of French women are about their bodies and their faces and how they look. It's really inspiring and really enlightening to me as someone who grew up and was born and raised in the US, seeing a different way to age is just beautiful. And there's more of naturalness, like even with nails, nails here in the US, like women, they, they have clean manicures, you know, clean nails, short, clean, simple, natural. In the US, the long acrylic nails is really big right now. So it's just some key differences I notice, and I think the accepting of who you are and accepting your natural beauty and appreciating how you naturally are in life, I think it's a beautiful thing and it's something that I think when you feel that appreciation for yourself, and more importantly, that acceptance of your body, of your face, exactly as it is as you're aging and getting older, there is this level of like secure self-worth. And I do believe that contributes to the French living happier lives in the sense that they don't care much about aging as Americans do in the States. In the, in the United States, it feels like an obsession, like constantly getting updated Botox or filler. But in France, it's really about being as you are and seeing lots of lines on a woman's face is common and celebrated. And we can't forget to mention food because what we consume, what we eat, the energy that we take into our bodies, it really has an effect on our levels of happiness and our energy levels. And fast food is alive and well here in France, but not anywhere near to the extent of what it's like in the US. There's less shame and guilt around eating what gives you pleasure. And one of the most important things to keep in mind is that the French eat a lot of creams, a lot of rich foods, but they do it in moderation. They don't feel guilt or shame around the pastries or the sweet foods or the bread, the, the croissants, the baguettes, like they really don't feel any guilt around that. And yeah, have, eliminating that shameful energy is so imperative to feeling a sense of lightness and joy in our lives. This is a key difference that I notice between the lifestyles in France and the US is France is a lot more walkable and especially in the cities, there's so many parks that you can walk through. And I always notice anytime I go to a city here in France, there's so many people out on their lunch breaks, you know, taking their meal and enjoying it outside in the park, close to the trees, sitting by a fountain on a park bench, you know, 
they actually like take the time to go for a walk, enjoy nature on their full one hour lunch break. My husband worked at a university in France and one of the Americans that worked there had a really difficult time taking her full one hour lunch break. She would notice that everyone in the whole office that was French or lived in France would go out for an hour to go take a walk in the park or go outside go have an apero, meet some friends at a cafe, really enjoy that full one hour time. And, and this American colleague found it to be so unproductive and she didn't like it. She didn't like taking that one hour lunch break. And, but that's a big difference, you know, is like the French actively take time off. And that leads me to my next point of take your full vacation time. The French really live a happier life because they don't feel guilt or shame around taking their full vacation time. Most French people take the full month of August completely off. It's a minimum of five weeks of vacation every year. And while not everyone can do that in the US, obviously, which obviously things need to change in the US to allow more people to have vacation time, but take your full two weeks. You know, if you're given a two week vacation every year, take it actively get out of the office, put on that vacation responder on your email on, turn off your texts and go enjoy yourself and be present. Another really important thing to know about the French and their lifestyle is that they do not place a great deal of importance on TikTok or growing their Instagram or their social media presence or being famous for that matter. And that is largely an American ideal or an American value that a lot of Americans hold, you know, hold dear to them is this need for fame or this need to be seen or this need for public recognition through social media and the internet. And this is something that I have noticed time and time again through all of my friends that I've had in France, all the people I've met, they don't care about that stuff. In fact, most of my friends find it very weird that I'm a YouTuber, they find it bizarre that like I'm on social media and I'm doing this internet thing. It's, it's, it's bizarre to them. And it doesn't mean that they don't use social media or they don't use TikTok, that's not what I'm saying, but they don't actively place this thirstiness or this importance on that. And that is a big difference between Americans and Europeans, but specifically the French that I've noticed. And I do believe this contributes to them being a lot happier because being glued to social media, having your sense of self-worth attached to what your performance is or how many people are following you or what your success rate is through TikTok and all these different platforms, it's not sustainable and it's not healthy in the long run and it can be very detrimental to our mental health. And I think this is something that the French are really good about dis disconnecting is that my social media presence is not indicative of my self-worth or what I have to offer in life. When we boil it down, Americans and the French are not all that different. We're human after all and we have way more similarities than differences. But these are some things that I have noticed about life in France, habits that really make for a happier life. And I hope this inspires you and uplifts you to take these habits with you wherever you are in this beautiful, big world. Señora Guadalupe, en su voz.